and welcome back to another Doctor Who YouTube video. Today we're going to be going over the one show interview which had Russell T Davies and David Tennant on. We're only a few days away now from the first special, The Star Beast, which is on Saturday. The promotion is clearly ramping up now and it's just so exciting. Anyway, let's get on with the video. But first, it is time to say a very happy 60th birthday to Doctor Who and who oh, better yeah. to celebrate with than the man who kick-started the reboot and the first Doctor to do the double shift. Please welcome <laughs> Russell T Davis and David Tennant! Hey, I don't know. Oh, they've got the posters out on the darling, but that's pretty cool. Oh, join us, join us. Thanks very much. Thank Good evening. You. Good evening. Uh, David, I love how David you because, is uh, well, the last, Your last words before chill. you were regenerated <laughs> back in 2010 were, I don't want to go. How prescient that turned out to well, be. Well, here you both are. Yeah. Um, so who decided to come back first out of the two of you? That's tricky, isn't it? It was kind of a so, yeah. group thing almost. We all know this story we did, pretty we did much. We did online things in the pandemic where everyone went online and fans all got together and yes. talked about Doctor Who. Yeah. That made Catherine Tate say to you, would well, oh. you fancy coming back? Wouldn't it be fun if we got the band back together for one yes. last go? She had that conversation with you. To me. And then I literally thought it was my job to pass that on to the BBC. I thought, well, I've got to report this. <laughs> you get two big stars like this saying I want to do Doctor Who and I can't yeah. not tell them. Why would uh, but we all kind of thought it would disappear, but yes. uh, here we are. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. We, had you did. we had a bit of a taste, didn't we, on Friday night because he did the sketch. That's right, yes. Needs. The sketch that has gone completely crazy online and I predicted that it would just because that's how Twitter, or now X, is and how everyone just seems to think that woke culture is taking over the world when realistically it's not woke culture it's just a sense <laughs> um, but what can you tell us about these three special episodes I really like to give much away oh, yeah. at mm. Come on, you're amongst David. friends. <laughs> we say the facts. Three okay. Saturdays. Go on, facts. Three Saturdays in a row. Yes. Yes. Doctor yes. Who lives on a Saturday, I think, doesn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah. It lives yeah. on a Saturday yeah. night. And it's not a three-part story. You can watch each one yes. separately. Okay. Yes. And they're all different. One's like a big family film. One's very scary. One's insane. Yes, they're very Ooh. different. Each one is really quite unique. I like that. He did mention that in the SFX magazine, that they were all kind of different, and you could watch each one individually. Um, but I really like how he's kind of been able to have this platform on the one show and say that. I don't know what the one show's viewings are normally like, but it's normally on before something like EastEnders, I think. So, you know, the EastEnders viewers... I was going to say the EastEnders viewers might watch this, but then this is like 25 minutes before their programme starts, so it might not, but I don't know. They might do some more promotional stuff down the end of the interview. The first one is, is a sort of recognised, uh, the sort of world of Doctor Who that you recognise, yes. I think. OK. Yeah. The second one is unlike any episode of Doctor they Who. They keep saying oh, this. I'm so excited. excited. And the third oh. one is bananas. <laughs> That's bananas. a roller coaster. Yeah. Shall we have a little look? I love Go how on, they mention. Right. Yeah, just as they're going through the trailer, I thought it would be really interesting to touch on the fact that I don't actually really know what the general public's response is yet being a doctor who fan obviously i consume it every single day and i you know interact with people on social media every day when it comes to doctor who but i'm not entirely sure what the general public's response has been yet and i don't know how far that marketing and promotion is being pushed to the general public i know it's featured on lots of like newspapers and magazines but you know mainly magazines that people who would already go out and buy those magazines would get um, and then we've had all this, obviously those snippets on TikTok and Instagram. So hopefully that kind of draws a few people in and go, oh, this is new. I'm really hoping that this marketing is working out because I haven't seen any promotional material in physical form yet on kind of advert boards, you know, kind of, you know, under tunnels. And, you know, just as you're driving around, you see those kind of paper um, adverts. So I know it was very prominent in series 11 so um they're obviously going for a different type of promotion during this run so yeah looking forward to seeing what the viewings are going to be like obviously fingers crossed it's going to be incredible and i have no doubt that their reach would have got to a lot of people so far already uh, that's great. Uh, david so explain to us how the 10th doctor can come back as the 14th well if only the doctor understood that okay. uh, but it just uh, it has happened 
he ha- it, the, the doctor has regenerated and yeah. Uh, we I, should come up with a reason, really, shouldn't uh, we? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and all his face has, has come back. <laughs> well, we, why, why would that be? He looks Unless confused. they just leave it and yeah, they don't. Yeah, he is confused. Yeah, no. yeah, he's like, sure I've been in this skin before. Yeah. yeah so well, it's uh, that's, that's sort of part of the story. I, it, uh, you know, a kind of, yeah. why am I here again? Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, he, do- he bumps into Donna Noble again, Catherine Tate. Um, before we do, will people notice any differences before... You know, with, with your last two doctors. I mean, there wouldn't be any point in me coming back to then play it completely differently. <laughs> I don't think. No. That would be a no. little yeah. big disappointment. We peculiar, like familiarity. Okay. This is something that I know people on Twitter are probably also going to have a moan about because obviously the 14th Doctor coming back as David Tennant, it's expected that he's going to be like 10, but Russell in magazines and interviews and stuff has said that it's going to be a different incarnation, obviously completely independent on its own, it's going to be very similar but also very different. And I think when you look at the Children in Need sketch that we saw the other day, you can kind of see that there's maybe a little bit more kind of, I don't know, bounce to him. I kind of got that impression anyway. Maybe that's just me being super nerdy and super excited about the fact that my childhood doctor is back. Obviously this is a question that keeps coming up, like why is he back? And that's a good question I think to ask the general public, because they're going to be like, well, why, why is he back? Yeah, I think that's probably a good question, actually, to ask. Yes. Yeah. But it, but it is, it, I mean, in terms of, this is the 14th Doctor, so I have been okay. Jodie Whittaker and Peter Capaldi and Matt Smith in between. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I have that, I carry that experience okay. with me. Fair I wonder enough. if that's brought and up on at all. That, what I was going to say is, obviously, she plays your sidekick, Donna yeah. Noble, Catherine Tate plays. References in terms of other things other than, I was this brilliant woman 60 minutes ago, which was a brilliant reference. Just like it, sorry, Donna Noble. Um, you wiped her memory 13 years I know, ago. Uh, I know. So, and if I mean, she remembers anything about the doctor, <laughs> her brain will melt and she will die. Brain pudding. Oh, right. So that's quite a that's quite a tricky place to start. Wow. Mm. Right. Yeah. And um, Russell, your inspiration was Star Beast. This is a comic, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Many years ago, in 1979, there was a Doctor Who comic strip, which is fantastic, written by oh, Pat yeah. Mills, really interested drawn by Dave Gibbons, who are to bring this up, really. Maybe it's to bring older fans alien, back who may have seen that in the past. Into Earth, being lost, wanting to get back Doctor home, Who's and, 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 and making friends with uh, school children. I mean, you'd think that was stolen off ET. That was printed two years before no. ET. I yeah. didn't actually. Yeah, know. It actually preceded. Yeah. It's a great really? story. Pretty so cool when I came back, I just thought, why not adapt a really? BBC great should story? sue ET. Yeah. Yeah. I remember reading it. I remember getting. getting Doctor well, Who that probably wouldn't go down well. With BBC's so when I favor. opened the script, and I said, "Adapt it." I remember that. Yeah. Was it quite difficult to bring sort of a comic? to life on screen because it looks quite comic-y doesn't you know the effects yes, are I mean, quite the wait to me, yeah. the meepers I'm so great, excited you're so innocent so yeah. sweet and so lovely so you, just wanted to, you wanted to be saved everybody would want one for Christmas absolutely yes. where are the toys where are the plushies yes. I need a meat plushie and I mean need and if I do not have one for Christmas or if I do not have one at the moment that they are available I am going to wreak havoc I'm going to riot I need a plushie of the Meep. The Meep is too cute to not have. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> but no, no, it's it's my job to, to make those things work. And you tie that into the story of Donna. Yeah. We who, need who a Meep plushie. seeing aliens and remembering what's going on. Yeah. So you get that to dovetail. It's quite a mix. Yeah, and things. the Meep is played. The voice of the Meep is uh, Miriam oh, Margulies. Wait, I mean, who doesn't love, love Miriam? Who Miriam. doesn't love Miriam? And when Miriam. you look at Meep quite closely, you think, <laughs> <gasps> Meep looks there, like there Miriam. There she is. <laughs> yeah. You do do that. You've, we film Miriam when she's doing the voice. So they map some of that onto the <gasps> CG. Well, that's actually really interesting. I mean, it's not surprising because that's the kind of technology that's used these days. But I didn't actually expect, for some reason, for that to have been done for this. I just thought I, I did see in Doctor Who magazine. Was it Doctor Who magazine? I think where they they spoke about the animatronics of Meep and how <laughs> they had to get like a really short actor to to get into the suit, and, but they were like just sat all the time while in the Meep costume. And like I was thinking that whole time, like wow, that must be so uncomfortable. Like you're you're squatting for I don't know how many minutes at a time. I'm assuming there must be some sort of like sitting mechanism in there. That would be really interesting. That's actually something I'm really interested in seeing on Doctor Who Unleashed. Well, it's working very well. And then you've brought oh. back like an evil character 
from the 1960s, yeah, The Toy yes, Maker, the played toy by maker. Neil Patrick Harris. That's mm. right. um, why did you want to bring this particular character back? He's a great big cosmic. In the third episode, he comes back in the third episode, the stakes are raised. I mean, it might be obvious that actually David's Doctor is not around forever, and there was a oh, new no. one waiting in the what? room. What? Oh, what? Call my agent. Sat live on air. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there is, things are going to get climactic, they're going to get dangerous, they're going to get astonishing. So, and you need a bigger villain as you possibly can. Neil Patrick Harris is just is the man. I mean, oh what a bit of casting that was. Absolutely. We were all very chuffed with each other. terrifying. Yeah. Wild. <laughs> yeah. It's oh. wild, isn't it? Russell and David, wait. thank you both. Oh, this has been absolute. But people are excited about this, aren't they? Uh, really? I am it's super beyond. excited, so, Alex. Well, the, uh, 60th the other host, I can't remember your name. Uh, this now, this is really bad of me, but I'm going to skip the next bit. But there's a really funny clip that I'm going to show you. I just like David Tennant. He's nice. I'd rate him as my second, maybe third favourite doctor. <laughs> really? That's a bit awkward. I like Naomi. Well, She's great. Say, Naomi, Naomi is. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Great. Number one from second or third. I imagine not knowing. Yeah, you could have been saying that basically directly to David Tennant. Also, sorry that my glasses are fogged up. It, that kind of happens sometimes when I laugh. Now that is pretty much it for the video. I'm pretty sure I talked most the way through that anyway, or tried to pause where I could, or sneak in a few words as they were talking. So apologies if I was just talking over them and you couldn't completely understand what they were saying. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, I think. They dived into pretty much everything that you would want to know if you weren't aware the Doctor was coming back, or if you were aware but weren't quite sure about what it was gonna be like. I think it was really clever actually to have them on the one show. But thank you so much for watching the video and please leave a comment and subscribe if you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye.